week long. I had prepared to bring something else. And then Friday, late Friday night, the Lord started speaking to me about his passions. You know, I, he's never late, but sometimes I wish he would push it so close. <laughs> Really, uh, preaching is a lot like using Common Core math. There's a simpler way to get there. <laughs> Pretty much anything we preach can be summed up in one sentence, but we take half an hour showing you how we got there. <laughs> so, um, really, what I have to, to preach tonight can be summed up in one line. Are you ready for the rest? <laughs> now, let me show you how I got there. Psalm chapter 7. Verses 8 and 9. For the media, I have titled this, What is this world coming to? What is this world coming to? Psalm 7, verse 8 and 9. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to, your, to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end but establish the just. For the righteous God tries the hearts and the righteous. Father, speak to us tonight. Minister to every heart of this place in Jesus' name. You may be seated. My title is taken from a rhetorical question that we often hear when we face a level of cruelty that boggles our mind. We're struggling to to comprehend man's capacity for such evil, and you'll hear people say, what is this world coming to? David must have been struggling with much the same question as he penned this song. He had just been ousted from his kingdom by his own son. He's running for his life. A man who conquered lions and bears, a man who brought a giant down with one stone, is now running from the monster he created. And as he passes over the brook, kick run, and begins the ascent to the Mount of Olives, the Bible said he was weeping. His heart was broken. And all of a sudden, a stone lands at his feet, and another, and another. And angry, hurtful words reach his ears and go like a dagger in his heart. As this man named Shimia says, in essence, good enough for you. You get what you deserve. You were an imposter from the beginning, and now you lose your kingdom just like Saul lost his. <laughs> And just dealing with all of the weight of betrayal and heartbreak and insult pressing on him at one time, David must have shook his head and said, what is this world coming to? Theoretically, rhetorical questions are not supposed to have answers. But this one, in fact, does. We find it in verse 8. The Lord shall judge the people. Yes. The first thing this world is coming to is judgment. This word, judge, this word translated judge in the original Hebrew means to go to court or to pass sentence. And Paul said it this way in Romans 2.16, God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. And he said again in Romans 14.12, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You'll not give account to your parents, to your pastor, to your siblings, to your principal, to your spouse. You give account to God. You see, I can look you in the face and I can tell you a lie and you may never know the difference. But when I stand in the awesome presence of a holy God, there is not one word I can utter in my defense. Revelation 20, 12. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Imagine with me a scene so austere and frightening words failed to describe it. In chapter 4 of Revelations, we see the judgment seat of Christ. And there's a rainbow surrounding the throne which speaks of God's covenant with man. There's angels and elders and living creatures and worship and holy, holy, holy. There's the seven lampstands shining with warmth and illumination. And best of all, there's the Lamb of God Himself still bearing the scars of our redemption, proving and guaranteeing that our salvation has been secured. 
true. Uh -huh. But now in chapter 20, we see a completely different throne. There's no symbol of covenant here because these people have rejected covenant. Amen. There's no worship for they've chosen to worship themselves in the place of God. There's no warmth and no illumination. The only light is the blinding glare of God's divine holiness. Worst of all, there's no intercessor. There's no lamb because these people have rejected the lamb of God. It's only lost, filthy humanity standing before a thrice holy God. Amen. The books begin to be opened. And every infraction against the law of God, every insult to the holiness of God is displayed as if on a giant screen for the world to see. And the judge of all the earth searches the book of life for your name. Yeah. And those piercing eyes like fire turn on you. On. And he says, depart from me. Yeah. I never knew you. You'll remember every service you sat through. Wishing the preacher would be done already so you could catch Desperate Housewives on TV. You remember every altar call when you sit in the back laughing, joking with your friends, playing on your cell phone, resisting the tug of the Spirit. You remember every time your pastor, your, your parent, or your youth leader pled with you to give your, your soul to Jesus and you said, not now, I'm still young. I got plenty of time. I want to sow my wild oats. I want to enjoy life. You remember every time God dealt with you about that secret sin and you rationalized it and you said, it's not that bad. It's no worse than what so-and-so's doing. Every squandered opportunity will replay itself over and over in your head like a never-ending horror movie as it finally sinks in that it's over. No hope, no chance. I'm forever lost without God. Amen. The cattle falls and every chance of mercy is gone. What's this world coming to? It's coming to judgment. Amen. It's coming to accountability for its rejection of Jesus Christ, its trampling of God's mercy, its abuse of His grace. Acts 17, 31, Paul writes, because He has appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. God has it on His calendar. You and I don't know what day it is, but God has it marked on His calendar that today I judge the world. That's why you had better be sure that things are right with God today because you have no idea at what moment that day comes. There's only one way to avoid this day. There's only one thing that will get you around having to appear in God's Supreme Court. David cries out, Judge me, O Lord. In the original language, this word judge is a different word from the first one that was translated judge. This one, in its broadest sense, means to govern. What David is saying is, oh God, evaluate me. Show me where I stand with you so I can correct course and get it right. Many workplaces today hand out periodically what they call self-evaluation. And you have to rate how you feel you are doing on your job, how proficient you are, how compliant you are with the rules. And you have to go through there and, and be as honest as you can be and evaluate yourself and see well, where I need help, where I need to improve, where I need to do things different, where I need to work a little harder. That's what God has set the church for. It's your self-evaluation test for you to look into the scripture and say, God, show me where I stand with you. Because Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11 that if we would judge ourselves, we wouldn't have to be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened to the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. He said to Timothy that some men are open going beforehand to judgment and some follow after. There are some who push their, their sin ahead of them and allow the blood of Jesus Christ to wash them all away. And there are some who push them behind them and try to hide them and try to cover them up and hope nobody knows. I'm telling you, every secret thing will be revealed. There will be a day when God pulls the cover off and it's exposed for the world to see. Sometimes it happens in this life. 
But if not, it will happen at the great way. Right. To keep short accounts with God and live in repentance is the only way to avoid the judgment scene we just visited. Right. To evaluate ourselves before God so that we need not be placed on the scales like Belshazzar. He refused to evaluate himself when God said, clean things up, I'm not happy. He refused to evaluate himself and God had to place him on the scales and find where he was lacking. How do I properly and honestly evaluate myself? Because we have a, a good way of glossing things over. Oh, I'm not angry, I'm just hurt. I'm not bitter, I just can't forget. I don't hate, I just can't stand that person. Yeah. We can smooth things over and make it look really, really good in our own eyes. Amen. But James says this in James 1.22. If any man is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who beholds his natural face in a mirror. He looks at himself. He sees where the errors are. He sees where the faults are. But he goes on his way and he forgets about it. Because it's too difficult to look at. It's too painful to see. He doesn't want to deal with the things that he sees in God's Word as he realizes that he doesn't line up in areas. As he doesn't line up in certain things. I looked into the Word of God this week and I was actually shocked as I realized that God sees the sees pride in the same, through the same lenses that he sees perversion. Both are an abomination. Oh, you think it's no big deal that I'm prideish and that I think I'm all that and I think that I'm the cat's meow and I think the world can't get by without me and I think the church can't get along without me and I think I'm the best of whatever I do. That's just as much a stink in the nostrils of God as the unnatural lifestyle of perversion. And when we see things like that, it's uncomfortable. And we don't want to look at that. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to say that that's where I fit into the, into the Scripture of God. But if you intend to avoid the sin we just described, you have to look into the Scripture and you have to allow God to correct the things in your life that are wrong. Amen. Psalm 139, the writer said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Do you understand you don't know what's in your heart? The heart is desperately wicked above all things and deceitful. Your heart will deceive you. Therefore, you need God to search your heart. Amen. Try your thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. It's only a lifestyle of repentance that will keep you out of the great way of not to repent one time and say the grace of God covers me, but to walk in a lifestyle of repentance that the moment the Spirit of God touches your heart about something, you repent. Yeah. Because there is a coming a day when repentance will not be an option. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you wait until you reach that day that God has marked on His calendar for judgment, you've waited too late. Repentance will do you no good. It has to be done now. This world's coming to judgment, but this world is also coming to justice. Verse 9, in the light of all that David was facing at the moment, indeed everything he faced in his whole life, it seems like he was just exhausted with all the evil that was going on in the world. We get that way sometimes when you hear so much going on. You just get tired of all the wickedness that happens. And he pleaded for the unrighteousness in the earth to cease. It seems like weekly we hear some new horror that takes depravity to a new low. And you wonder, I, you, I, could, I didn't think people could be that mean. I didn't think they could be that evil. When grandparents kill their own grandchildren and stick them in an oven. When people do unspeakable things, then you wonder how it even crossed the human mind to do such a thing. And we wonder, will it ever end? When will God say enough? When will the violence and abuse and rape and murder and mayhem stop? When will the wickedness face its comeuppance? When will the murder of children born and unborn cease? When will the rape and human trafficking end? When will the harvest and sale of human organs from still living victims end? When will child suicide end? When will the things that are happening in this world come to an end? When will priestly predators and pastoral pedophiles end? When will the godlessness of this society come to an end? Everywhere you look, there's filth. In every direction. 
when women march for the right to kill their own children. There, there is, there's protesters looting, rioting, burning, killing. They don't even know what they're protesting. Gangs are at war with each other in Houston while Detroit is anarchy reigning. In Europe is actively implanting the RFID chip, and they say by the end of, of this year, every newborn baby will have a microchip implanted. China's preparing for a military takeover of South Africa, while South Africa herself runs red with the blood that the racial war is causing, absolutely ripping that nation apart. Yeah, yeah. Bernal has banned the celebration of Christmas with a five-year prison sentence for violators. In Egypt and in Pakistan, Christians are pulled from cars and beaten and killed and tortured. Are you still concerned with which team wins the SEC? You still care about what happens next on the next episode of Walking Dead? Look around you, friend. The Walking Dead live next door. The Walking Dead shop the same aisles of Walmart. The Walking Dead share the same classrooms with you. Men dead in trespasses and sins. Men who walk in the void of the presence of God bound to stand in the courtroom of God. What are you doing to reach them? How are you trying to reach the shine the light of the gospel into the, their lives? How are you trying to change them? We look around, we see the evil, and we cry with David, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Uh -huh. But on its deepest level, this is a cry for the return of Christ yeah, and for the restoration of mankind to his original design. Amen. Man was never meant to slaughter man. Amen. Parents were never meant to abuse, neglect, molest, and murder their own babies. Man was created upright in the image of God. He was designed to live in harmony and fellowship with his creator. Amen. But sin destroyed their original pattern. Sin shattered the image of God without and marred the likeness of God within. Now David's crying out for the restoration of the glory. For the end of sin's dominion and the commencement of the kingdom age when Christ will rule the world in righteousness. Only then will they be beat swords in the plows and spears in the pruning hooks. Only then will nation no longer lift up the sword against nation and study war no more. There will be no lasting peace until the Prince of Peace rules this world. Then the lion and lamb will lay down together. Then a child will lead a wolf like a puppy. And that's when they shall not hurt nor destroy in all the holy mountain. There will be no more curse then. There will be no more sickness then. There will be no more pain then. There will be no more tears then. There will be no more sin. Oh yes, our Lord is coming back to us again. Oh, the that's when the wickedness of the wicked will come to an end. Righteousness will run in the streets like rivers. But when God brings the wickedness of the wicked to a screeching halt, uh -huh. where will you be? Will you allow God to evaluate you now and put every sin under the blood? Or will you be one who stands in the line at that terrible, fearsome white throne judgment when God judges the nation? The world's coming to judgment and justice. But it's time the church came to repentance and intercession. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. And I close with this. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yeah. And if it begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Uh -huh. And if the righteous If the righteous scarcely be saved. Mm -hmm. You and I that love God with all our hearts, if we barely make it in. Mm -hmm. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner okay. Unless you share the gospel with them, they'll appear in that line waiting to hear the part from me. You don't want to uh -huh. That means your son. That means your daughter. Yeah. That means your siblings. 
your best friend, yeah. your spouse. Yeah. Unless you shine the light of the gospel, they'll be standing in line for eternal judgment. I don't really even know how to give this all to God. I'm just guess. I want everybody who is capable, physically able, I want you to move toward the front.